for the introduction. And many thanks to all of you. Uh, thanks that you didn't leave and wait here until my presentations. I appreciate it. I'm Jan Karlec, I work for Seasonic Labs. I'm going to talk about NatDNS. And it's going to be different from what you heard because there's going to be no policy in it, no models. And I'm only going to say uh, TLD three times, including this one. So, a quick introduction of what, uh, what is CZNIC Labs. Uh, most of you probably know what CZNIC does, but CZNIC Labs is an R&D department of, of CZNIC. Uh, we have 15 people in two sites. Uh, we work on open source projects only. And some of them include PERC, which is an internet routing daemon. It's very popular. Then we work on a thing called a DNSSEC validator, which is a plugin for a browser, and it lets you immediately know whether the site you're accessing is uh, secured by DNSSEC or whether it's signed properly. Uh, then we have an uh, academy, a teaching center, where we promote IPv6 and <coughs> DNSSEC. But most importantly, the project we work on the most, uh, there are in total four people working on it, including me, uh, is not DNS. So what it is? It's an open source, authoritative only uh, DNS server. It's designed to be fast and to run continuously without no interruption in responses. So no matter what you do with your server, no matter if you reload the zones, if there's a transfer incoming, uh, it always responds. So the queries are never thrown away. It's usable in the root scenario, it's usable for uh, TLDs, that's the second time, uh, for hosting companies and for everybody else, for everybody who needs an authoritative name server. It, it runs on every major system, including Linux, uh, it runs on BSDs and Mac OS. It doesn't run on Windows uh, because probably there's no need for that. Uh, if you think otherwise, then let us know and we might do something about it. As far as the features are concerned, it does full zone transfers, it does incremental transfers. Those transfers can be secured using TSEC, uh, and it does the yeah, SEC with NSEC or NSEC free. And a lot more, but we will get to that. Okay, maybe you're wondering why do I need another name server? Why do I need another authentication? Uh, I've got Bind, everybody knows how to use it, everybody knows how to operate it. Uh, it's been around for years and it's stable. And so on and so on. Well, that's true. Uh, the main reason why I need another implementation is diversity, though. Because uh, if there's an exploit for Bind, there's a good chance that it's not going to work on our server or maybe some of the others that, uh, that are over there. So uh, I chose these implementations to uh, compare our server with. Uh, we've got NSD, which is developed by uh, Nelnet Labs in Netherlands. Then you've got Yadifa, uh, the, which is developed by EU, the EU. Then there's our server, Bind, developed by ISC, and PowerDNS, which is developed by, this, well, it's a, it's a company, uh, it's open source as well, all of them are, but PowerDNS, uh, they specialize in DNSSEC and they, they, sell, uh, uh, they sell user support, which we don't. So, uh, on this picture, there are two axes. One of them are features, one of them is performance. So, the higher this, you know, you get it. So, uh, we, uh, the fastest, it, no server is the fastest as of now, but these two are pretty close. Whereas, uh, Bind and PowerDNS are not as fast, but it's okay because they've got a lot of features. So, there's a use for everyone and each of them. So what we want to do with not DNS is we want to move it a little bit to the right, but not as far as Bind or Power DNS, because they've got tons of features and everything can be configured and we don't want to do that. It's just uh, it, it's overwhelming to the users. So we'd like to add more features while maintaining this level of performance, if at all possible. So let me 
talk about what's been happening lately with our server. We've added a new user manual, uh, which is very exhaustive. It's got more than 30 pages. Uh, yeah, and it's uh, available for download on our website. Uh, then we've added a feature that lets you create differences from directly from the uh, changes you make to the zone file. Uh, then you reload the server and it's, uh, you can send it to another server. So it, this is usable in master scenario. Uh, we've added two more tools, uh, check point and check zone. Uh, they are just convenient for convenience. We've added uh, Dane protocol support. Uh, that's uh, something my boss works on on day three, uh, and it it gets to it's it's used to store uh, certificates in DNS. Yeah, and just yesterday we've we've released a new bug fix release, uh, which fixed one minor issue and one bigger issue. So if anyone of you uh, is using your DNS, be sure to get that update. Okay, so what's next for our server? Uh, we have a new version which is almost completed and now it's being tested and it will get released in no later than uh, 14 days, I believe. Uh, it's going to feature dynamic updates. I think most of you know what it is. Uh, for those of you who don't, it's a, it's a way how to update a zone, but it's similar to transfers, but it's usable for, let's say, smaller smaller changes, where transfers can be, you know, if you sign a zone, you do it by transfer. If you want to add just one record, and you do it by dynamic updates, for instance. And we have vastly improved our control tool, uh, which can now, uh, which is now secured and can be used from uh, another machine, so you can control the server remotely. Uh, and what it also does, we've added a new, well, an option to extend command with a uh, name of the zone. So let's say you want, you have uh, a scenario, scenario where you have tens of thousands of zones, and you only want to uh, refresh or reload one of them. So you tell the command, well, re reload uh, example.com, for instance, and it will only reload that one zone. Whereas the old tool has to reload all the zones, and of course it. it, it took a lot of time, it was not very good uh, for users because it was not easy to use, as easy to use. Okay, another thing we want to improve is uh, memory consumption because right now the server consumes a lot of memory. It's very fast, uh, it's been designed to be fast, but we didn't really uh, take memory into consideration uh, as much as we could have. So. Uh, we're not fixing that. How are we planning to do that? Uh, we want to get of uh, we want to get rid of some of the redundant structures we have, uh, and there's also our server uses a lot of pointers, and uh, this is not very good on 64-bit machines. Uh, so we want to get rid of those as well, and then we want to do some more things to technical. And also, while uh, when it comes to responses, our server is the fastest one. It's not the fastest one to load. When you start it, it is not slow to load the zones, but it's not the fastest. So we want it to be the fastest server available. So now uh, we're working on that. Uh, we've written a new zone file parser, which is actually a standalone project. It's not uh, uh, connected to our code at all. So you can download it and use it in your project if you're interested. Okay, uh, those, are the those are the features we've already, or we are working on now. Uh, what are we planning to do, or what we plan to do in the near future? Uh, we want to make it even easier to operate by making the configuration file simpler. Uh, we've had some suggestions from users and we, we do not take those lightly. Then we want to improve control tool even further. Uh, so that you can add and remove zones without actually uh, editing the config file. So you can start a server with no zones, it's not going to serve any zones, but and then you can feed the zones into the server while it's running, which I think is a very nice feature. But it's not really easy to do, so it's going to take time. Yeah. And we want to make it even faster, but uh, 
the speed of responses is not, not always a good thing because the faster the server is, uh, the more viable it is to use for DNS amplification attack. So we want to add support for uh, detection of these attacks. And when there's uh, this kind of attack when it's detected, the server is going to slow the rate of responses uh, that they are being generated by you know, the attacker. Okay, and what we plan to do eventually, uh, maybe let's say next year, uh, we want to add something which is called Vibe-Views. Uh, Bind came up with this. It's, uh, it's got nothing to do with uh, DNS. Uh, there's no RFC for it, but people want it. Uh, what it means, it means that you have one zone and the zone appears to be different for people uh, accessing it from your internal um, company network than people that are accessing it from outside. So we plan to do that and then uh, most people want uh, automatic DNSSEC operation which means uh, they want uh, the zone to be resigned every, I don't know, <laughs> how often, let's say every month. Uh, yeah, and so on. We might eventually add a database backend, which uh, most people, or a lot of people, ask about as well. Uh, but we'll see about that. Maybe, maybe that's not going to happen. So we're wondering, okay, that's a lot of features. Why should, why should I even care? So uh, let me give you a few, few points why I think, why I think you should use no DNS, or maybe even try it, or just try it, not use it. So we have a four-hour testing process, which is mostly automated. Uh, we've got nightly tests that uh, simulate the operation of, of, a, of an authoritative server. Uh, there are transfers, updates, signing and, and re-signing of zones, and, and, and so on and so on. Uh, it even does, uh, each night it tells us the changes we made to the code, whether the, they have sped up the server, or whether they have improved the memory consumption, and so on so that we can constantly keep improving it. I'll skip that because you, you are tired and can see that. The second reason uh, I'd like to give you is uh, we work close with the community. Uh, issues you, as a community, uh, report to us always have a priority. Uh, actually, this Monday, one of our users, uh, a hosting company, they said they had a problem with our server, that the zones were not being updated, uh, or that they were not being synced with their master server. And it turned out to be a bug, uh, which we fixed uh, you know, the same day, so it only took a few hours. So that's how we, you know, <laughs> that's how we handle uh, user reports, or user, user reported bugs. There are a couple of ways to reach us uh, by Google Plus, then we have a mailing list. And even if you find a bug, you can even uh, input it into our uh, issue tracking system. And uh, this is over there. And <coughs> I'd like to give you a few examples of uh, people, users, who use our server now. So we've got people from Elroot uh, testing it. I don't think it runs on Elroot as of now, but it might soon, Ho hopefully it does. Uh, then, and that's the third and last time I say DLE. No, I'm going to say it four times. Okay, then we have uh, two CCLDAs uh, trying it. Uh, .io, I think they're waiting for the new version and then it's gonna run as a slave server. And .dk, uh, and it already runs there uh, as a slave server. Then we've got two Czech hosting companies who use it, uh, hostingnighty.cz and igumonet.cz. And of course, uh, we use it internally. Uh, we use it as a slave server for all zones that are uh, served or op operated by CZNIC, which includes .cz, uh, and that domain has almost one million domain names in it. So, and it handles it pretty well, as you are about to see. 
Uh, the query rate over here is not very high. Oh, sorry, this is a example. It's a, it's a uh, example of a traffic on .cz uh, for one week, and this is uh, these are the queries that uh, were responded for our server. So as you can see, the query rate is only about thousand queries per second, uh, which is really low because our server can easily do 300,000, 400,000, even even half a million queries per second. Uh, but as you can see, it, it ran for a week with no downtime at all. Oh, and that's um, almost two, two uh, months ago. So since that, we've, of, of course, improved it a lot. So let me just recap uh, what I've said. Uh, NodeDNS is a fast uh, authoritative name server. It's free, of course. Uh, it's being actively developed. Uh, it's being developed close to a uh, community, and there are a lot of uh, exciting new features coming. So, with that, I end my presentation. Thanks a lot for listening. And if there are any questions, Beginning of your presentation, uh, you said authoritative only. Can oh. you explain this? Authoritative only. Yeah, so. it, it means that uh, uh, it can be only used uh, to serve the zone, let's say, .cz, .com, well, .com is big, so well, let's see, .de. Uh, it doesn't do recursion. So uh, let's say uh, an internet service provider, they have a recursive name server. Uh, and it means it does the queries to the authoritative, authoritative name servers. There are two kinds of DNS servers. One of them is authoritative, one of them is recursive. So this is the authoritative one. And it means it only serves the zone. Uh, it doesn't do any query. So uh, organizations around this kind of server. When, when you govern a zone, uh, it, it has to run on an authoritative uh, DNS server. And about dynamic updates, this means that you can use a dynamic DNS. Yes, 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 uh, NS update. For example, for mobile, I think. Maybe. No, no, I, I think that's something different. Uh, it, it has to do with changes you make to a zone file. Uh, dynamic DNS is probably something different. We, we can talk about it later. You know? okay. And if you've got any more more technical questions, then write <laughs> me an email, uh, or we can meet here tomorrow. Um, I'll be here until 3 o'clock, I believe. So, thanks a lot for staying so long, and have fun at the dinner. <laughs>